The UN event was his original reason for coming to the U.S., and many experts believe that speech could be the most important of his trip. Kim Lawton takes a look at the unique role the Pope and the Vatican play on the world stage. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin was once questioned about the influence of the Vatican. Stalin is famously said to have replied, the Pope, how many divisions has he got? The answer, as it turns out, is more than Stalin and many others might have guessed. Experts say the Pope and the Vatican wield considerable global influence. They don't have economic engines they have to feed. They don't have armies. They don't have land. The Vatican is only 106 acres. It's, it's the smallest nation state in the world, but it is a huge moral, spiritual superpower. In questo momento. As the Bishop of Rome, Pope Benedict XVI is a spiritual head of the Roman Catholic Church worldwide. But he also wears another hat, head of state for the independent territory of Vatican City and the Catholic Church's government called the Holy See. It's the, the tension between those two roles that actually gives him a resilience on the international stage, that he doesn't just speak for a geopolitical unit, but also for a demographic within the world. The Holy See has played an active global role for centuries. It has permanent observer status at the United Nations and has all the rights of full UN membership. The Holy See has formal diplomatic relations with 177 countries around the world, including the U.S. Ambassadors called Apostolic Nuncios represent the Holy See from embassies like this one in Washington, D.C. The U.S. has sent an ambassador to the Holy See since 1984. The current U.S. ambassador at the Vatican is Harvard Law Professor Marianne Glendon, who took up her post in February. James Nicholson held the position from 2001 to 2005. I always said I practice moral diplomacy. During the more than 25 years of his pontificate, John Paul II dramatically raised the profile of the papacy on the international level and played a key role on many fronts, such as helping to bring down communism in Eastern Europe. Throughout his extensive travels, he was a vigorous global voice. Benedict has continued that advocacy, which experts say reflects foundational Catholic beliefs. But times have changed since John Paul became Pope. We don't have the Soviet Union anymore. What we have is the problem in, problems in the Middle East, which is where uh, Pope Benedict has been directing his attention. The personalities have also changed. Whereas John Paul, if you look at the entire pontificate, was very much outwardly oriented toward the church and the world. But Benedict again generated controversy in the Islamic world on the Saturday before Easter when he baptized a prominent Muslim journalist at a service in St. Peter's Basilica. He's also been quietly working to establish relations, something that was not possible during the last papacy, largely because of John Paul's role in the fall of communism in Poland. The Chinese obviously didn't want John Paul II running around China doing the same thing. Most of the time, in places around the world, Vatican diplomats work outside the spotlight, where experts say they often have an advantage. Some question how much government leaders of today truly listen to what the Pope has to say. And that, observers say, is a moral authority that can't be measured by economic strength or military divisions. A moral authority Benedict hopes to draw upon when meeting with U.S. officials and speaking before the United Nations. I'm Kim Lawton in Washington. A lot of good Christians in Roman Catholic Church. Notice, Catholic Church, but unfortunate because they don't understand the history of their church. During dark ages, Constantine was the one who united his own people, the pagans, to Catholic Church. And when they unite in the church, because, you know, there was statue worshippers, you know, idols. So when they brought their idols, notice statues in Roman Catholic Church, they began to name them. Instead of Jupiter, they call it Peter. And it's so sad that they give them a lot of Christian names. And they bow down, you know, sometimes they kiss, they worship. But to change the name, that doesn't mean the idol is changed. Friends, so when they take leadership in the church during dark ages, they change rules in the church and they come up with a lot of traditions because they can go by Bible rules. Because like I said, there were pagans according to Ten Commandments, you don't have to bow down images 
and statues. If you look Roman Catholic Church, the Ten Commandment, the Second Commandment that talks about images, they remove that. And then the Tenth Commandment, you know, they spread. One of the things that they also did, they persecute a lot of Christians that they protest against their paganism and their traditions. You know, Protestant Sunday churches, you know, they persecute them, a lot of them. So that's why their forefathers, they run from persecution and they came to United States and they find free land. So now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 13 and you're going to learn a beautiful Bible prophecy. Revelation chapter 13 has two beasts. Notice the first beast is Roman Catholic Church. And then the second beast is United States, verse 11 and 18. They unite with Roman Catholic Church. Let's find out who gave the power to Roman Catholic Church. Notice Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? Friends, according to Revelation Chapter 13, we know that the dragon gave the authority, the power to this beast. And according to Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, the Bible helps us to understand that the dragon is the old serpent called the devil and Satan. Notice what it says in verse 11 and 12. Notice the same chapter, Revelation chapter 13. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like dragon. And he exercised all the authority from the first beast in his presence, and caused the earth, and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose dead wound was healed. Just in case if you're thinking about any country, they don't fit. What is the China, India? Iraq or Africa, they don't fit. That's what it says in verse 12. He exercised all the authority. Notice from the first beast, Roman Catholic Church, because when they run from persecution, they came over here. They don't want to have anything to do with Roman Catholic Church because they used to persecute them, friends. That's what it says. And again, I want you to get this so that you will know that it's a United States. Verse 12, he exercised. All the authority from the first beast. But unfortunately, the same verse 12 says, And cause the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So United States is going to cause the whole world to worship Roman Catholic Church. And that's why now they already have pagan sun worship day. Sunday worship the Roman Catholic Church. They change God's Holy Sabbath from Saturday to their pagan Sun worship day. Sunday worship. So whenever they enforce the law, friends, if you think, well, you know, because I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to sell, and the things is going to be hard, and you don't believe in God, and you doubt His power, if you doubt God who created you, the one who holds your breath, and if you doubt his power, and if you go by the pagan sun worship day behind the scene is the devil that wants you to worship him, at that time probation will close. Your decision is made. You will be doomed. Revelation chapter 14, God placed a fearful curse on those who receive the mark of the beast. Those who worship the devil. But friends, have faith. Jesus Christ will send his angels. Sometimes they will come as a form of man, mankind. And they will give you a foot in the time of trouble. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7 to 11. Notice what Bible says. And again he digs in it a certain day. Saying in the devil today. After such a long time as it has been said today. If you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. For if Jesus has given them rest, then he will not afterward have spoken of another day. No.